Hello folks, Marco here. This is the first video of this new series called My Guitars, where I want to show you my axes, what I use them for, which mods I made to them, and a little bit of history of the instruments. Each instrument has its own purpose. Of course, through the years, I have several of them. I didn't buy everything yesterday. This allowed me to discover basically what I need, what I don't need, what I like, what I don't like, and what is here because of gas. We start with my weapon of mass destruction for the studio, the VGS Soul Master 7 string with the Everton Bridge, heavily modded. The main feature, of course, is the Everton Bridge. Uh, I think it's the most groundbreaking invention of our times. YouTube is flooded with videos about it and how it works. If you're not familiar with it, let's say that it enables you to maintain the tuning no matter what, under every circumstances. And that, for us guitar players, is a godsend. We play an instrument that basically is already out of tune, even when it's in tune, if you know what I mean. And we spend half of our lives on the instrument, tuning the damn thing. Anyway, back when I bought it, there were no guitars on the market with this kind of bridges, uh, unless you could afford a custom minus or something like that. The only brand in Europe that was doing it was VGS this French unknown brand. The only video I could find was from Kit Marrow, who was grabbing the guitar by the strings. Anyway, I could do that. And uh, it was so promising, I pulled the trigger. And I'm glad I did it because it is now a game changer for me. It allows me to record, play anything with perfect intonation across all the fretboard and I don't have to check the tuning every five minutes. Really, for studio works, it's a no-brainer. There is a catch though that nobody talks about, at least I never heard from any Everton review. Having a single spring for each string gives you more tension than a standard bridge. If they tell you that this is exactly like a standard bridge, it isn't, I'm sorry. The feeling is different, you get uh, a small delay in the response of the strings when you're bending. I found a way out for both of these issues. Tension-wise, I'm a 10 guy, I pretty much have 10s on all my guitars, so I went back to 9s. In this instrument, I have the same tension like the other guitars I have. For the bands, I set the band zone right above its safe zone. They tell you to turn the pegs until you hear the change of pitch and then go back. Well, what I did is I didn't go back completely. I'm slightly above the threshold where you hear the change of pitch. The spring has tension, has more tension anyway, and it's quicker. This works for me, doesn't mean that will work for you, but you can give it a try. Let's talk about the mods, there are quite a few. Now, if you wanna get things done professionally, especially if you're gonna alter something physically on the instrument, you wanna go to the best. Here in Italy, I'm quite fortunate because uh, we have two guys that are amazing at what they do. I'm talking about Miji and Fago. You can see their works on some high-profile musicians like Kiko Lureiro, Marco Sfogli, Michelangelo Berio, and others. Since the instrument itself is quite cheap, you can expect some minor flaw here and there. Miji took care of the nut, filing and reshaping some slot. Then he leveled the frets to eliminate any bugs. And even made a correction of the neck pocket to get a nice and strong fit. Plus he stained the brownish fretboard to a nice black, ebony-like color for aesthetic reasons. Fabio took care of the electronics. He installed the bare knuckle after Matt calibrated the sec I bought, actually resizing the cavities to let them fit. And with his wizardry, he put a five-way switch 
plus a push pull for the splits I love so much and I need in every guitar of mine, giving me 10 different sounds. You also switch the pots and uh, tweak the poles of the pickups to achieve a more even sound from string to string and finished by doing his thing in the electronic cavity. It's so polished, organized, it can make a boring thing like the cables, capacitors and so on actually feel exciting just to watch. Besides the aesthetic, everything is perfectly shielded and by using high quality cables you get a slight brighter tone out of it. All of that because I needed very nice clean sounds. I gain an abrasive split tones and anything in between, even jazz sounds, if I needed to. Then Niji made the final touch with his setup, intonation, action and so on. And here you have it, a perfect instrument. I can't say enough good things about those guys, they're amazing. Even on a personal level, I love you guys. So if you consider the Everton, the pickups, all the electronics and all the sounds I can squeeze out of it, plus the amazing playability, I'm very satisfied with this guitar. If I have to nail some riffs with the perfect intonation, very stable, or maybe I have to track something that is in the high register, this one comes handy. I grab this one and it delivers every time, just like that. So here it is, my Swiss Knife Studio Guitar. <laughs>